Hey guys, this is Luminous coming at you with DCDH number 6, Dota Commentary Dota Help, where I try to help you become a better Dota player by looking at the very tiny details of Defense of the Ancients. And today we are going to talk about Creep Equilibrium. If you actually checked out my How to AFK Farm video, that has a 2 or 3 minute clip that has just shown you what Creep Equilibrium is. Um, if you actually don't know what Creep Equilibrium is, that is the art, and I do mean the art, of controlling your basically where your creep wave is and control it a way that would benefit your either laning ability or farming ability and this is actually a great way for you to a dominate a lane or to extend your farm so I got two replay for you guys to kind of look at how creep equilibrium is gonna really help you um, do really well in terms of either extending your advantage or, or kind of not fall too much behind so first of all we're gonna look at a solo mid replay and which better solo mid replays other than look at than Yafit's Shadow Fiend. This particular replay, we're going to talk about how Yafit is going to particularly use his creep equilibrium to his advantage and control the runes. Um, one, one really good thing, or one really essential thing about mid solo is that it's not just about CSing, even on the Shadow Fiend. And also, it's a very important to control this lane, especially when you're playing a Shadow Fiend. So, creep equilibrium in a sense is, again, how to control where you're, you know, Put the creep wave wherever you wanted it to go, right? So, and and it's gonna be particularly important if you're Shadow Fiend and you're trying to con control the rune, uh, especially if you know rune spawns at two, four, six, or eight minutes. So it's actually a very good idea to control the creeps in a way so that when the sec uh, second or fourth or the sixth minute rune spawns, all your creeps are on their tower, and this will allow you to basically go get the rune for free. Meanwhile, the other enemy solo mid hero is going to be basically sitting at the tower trying to repel all this creep or trying to farm from it. Which, you know, this this is a, a great advantage of controlling creep equilibrium to, to get, you know, yourself even further ahead by grabbing those runes. So, we're going to see that in practice today. And uh, I'm going to talk throughout this, I guess... I guess a six. We're gonna watch this replay for the six minute or so, and throughout that, I'm gonna talk about creep equilibrium extensively, and just apply to more of a general, kind of more generally, because you're not gonna play shadow in every single game. So there's there's not much real applications if I'm just looking at, gonna look at a, a single shadow fiend replay and not talk about the general aspect to it, right? So um, just looking at shadow fiend, he has not spent all his you know 600 gold. Not too big a deal going for that early battle. Fairly common on shadow fiends. But I want to want I want I want you to watch as this uh, clock gets to closer and closer to um, Shadow Fiend is gonna start to expand his nukes. Um, he, you know maybe he'll he'll wait till he'll turn to level three, but uh, by that time he he should be starting to push the lane because right now you see that this uh, Nai is actually in a great position because the creep is on the enemy side, right? Um, we're gonna be watching from Shadow Fiend's perspective. Uh, the creeps on the, I guess, quote unquote, the enemy side of the Shadow Fiend. So you can see that Shadow Fiend is starting to just, just attack, <laughs> attack really crazily, and you're gonna see him blow two Shadow Rays in this nuke, in this wave. And, and that's that's because he want these creeps to be right here. And when all the when he's creep, yeah, he's gonna blow a Shadow Rays. Um, and no, notice how Shadow, uh, he's actually using the raises on the creeps and also on the hero and exchanging a lot of damage because he does have a bottle coming and a salve too so actually that was a bad raise so exactly when around two minute mark creeps are already on the enemy tower and he is going to get a basically a free rune so this is like a good intro of how creep equilibrium is going to benefit you because in the mid lane right people think it's just all about CSing but really it's not and we're going to see on the 4th minute and the 6th minute this is exactly what Yafits can continue to do and it's not like a selected I, I watch a lot of Yafit replay and just you know basically found him doing this and I'll be like wow wow you know Shadow Fiend is doing this actually I just grabbed a random replay out of a random Yafit game this is actually a game that um, Jack has it or Jack featured on his YouTube channel very recently. I was like, well, I'll just download that exact same replay. I'm pretty sure Yafit is going to do this. So I watched it once and saw, yeah, he's exactly doing this. Controlling Creep Equilibrium. And notice how he's basically, basically with that bottle, uh, free for Rune, he just basically won the lane, pretty much. Um, he's uh, pretty ahead in terms of a level advantage. He basically has a Creep Wave on his side, or well, on the enemy side, but he's basically free farming at this point. And we're gonna just two exit up to the uh, up to 
like the 330 mark and that's when you want to start to nuke again yeah he's nuking once again and again all this time this creep is just so it's just basically on the enemy side and really there's nothing that a TA can be doing and you can see that as the, the clock rolls to the 4 minute mark we will see Shadow Fiend is going to be picking the next rune Let's see if he's going to blow another a nuke or two on the wave. Yeah, we do see a C raise and then another raise and probably a yeah, Z raise. Again, all these creeps on the Nanaya. And again, that's another free runes. Shadow Feet is going to be guessing top and he is going to find a double damage rune. So, I mean, again, this is a very... Shadow Fiend specific thing, but you could generally do it with any AoE nuker, right? You could go for like a you know a Quap or let's see what what other big AoE nuker are are in the mid lane. Um, Stormster could do this. Line could do this, where you could just kind of nuke the enemy creep wave, not as successfully as Yafit's Shadow Fiend, but you get the picture, right? So you might be asking, what if I'm not playing a an AoE intensive hero like Tinker? Or if I'm playing Lion, I want to don't really want to expand my uh, impales, just you know, nuking creeps. What what should I be doing to push the wave to the enemy side? There's a couple of things you could do. First, you could actually auto attack a little bit more. Um, when I say auto attack, I don't mean just like auto attack. I mean just right click on your on your enemy's creeps, but uh, you know, do it in a way that they you could actually last it right. Um, and, and deny and stuff so don't be afraid of auto auto attacking it's it's not a invalid tactic especially if you're just doing it around the like uh you know the 330 mark or the 130 mark or the 530 mark to push the wave a little bit to the enemy side so you could grab the six minute or, or four minute rune okay if you don't want to auto attack that's okay too a uh, second thing you could be doing is actually purposely drawing aggro uh from your enemy enemy hero and the way you could do this is, let's say I'm playing a Shadow Fiend here, I'll just basically right click on the on the Nanaya, and that, that will actually draw the enemy creeps onto me. And when the enemy creeps are dra being drawn onto me, my creeps will attack their creeps, and their creeps won't be attacking anything. So slowly but surely, you, your, your creeps will be pushing, because, you know, again, your creeps are attacking while their creeps are trying to chase you down. So you can see again by the six minute mark, the creeps are so so pushed right now. And again, he really needs to just turn around, nukes once or twice, and he will get a uh, the wave push. But he's getting, being ganked right now, so this is not a good example. So if, if that Sand King wasn't here, if that TA wasn't going so boss to the wall, um, you would have seen Shadow Fiend just nuked once again, and he's gonna get a six minute rune. So um, in in that regard, I hope you guys could understand how how creep equilibrium is is very important in terms of controlling the mid lane and grabbing those runes. Also, a good advantage of maintaining a creep equilibrium is that depending what do you want to push or to defend, you can see that Yafit's tower hasn't taken a single hit yet, whereas Nice tower is around at you know, I guess a quarter down or a third down, depending if you want to push the lane here. Um, I'm not gonna play out this replay, but uh, and I urge you to watch the comment here done by Jack of this exact same replay. We're gonna see Shadow uh, Shadow Fiend is continuing to nuke down nuke down those creeps and it's gonna push down a mid tower fairly quickly. But that's not the point of this. Uh, the point of this is actually controlling the creep equilibrium. Like, creep equilibrium to the enemy side so he grabbed the runes so i'm gonna just stop this replay and go to the next replay as i talk about creep equilibrium just a little bit longer so obviously we saw the obvious advantage of that you, you were able to grab the runes you're able to land more damage on the towers and even so you're you're also putting the your creeps under the enemy tower fire so templar assassin is going to have a little bit extra trouble lasting those creeps also you, your creeps are going to constantly do a little bit extra damage to the enemy Templar Assassin. All these are great advantages. Now, a couple of disadvantages when you're doing some kind of that offensive creep equilibrium pushing kind of thing is that you're more susceptible to gank. So that means you have to pay a little bit extra attention to the minimap and whatnot. But you know, this is a, a trade-off that you have to make. Uh, do I want to get the easy, more easy rune access, or do I want you know to be more susceptible to gank to get the best of both worlds actually to start pushing around the either 130 mark or 330 mark or 530 mark so that you, you'll be under the your own tower coverage for most of the time but for the critical time during the rune spawn you push the lane and that's that's pretty, pretty basically the gist of it so this is another replay that we're going to be not watching solo mid because creep equilibrium could be applied on any, every other lane as well. Um, this is actually a replay that we played in our own DC in-house. And what the clip I want to talk about is going to happen around 17 minute elapse time. So I'm not going to, you know, I'll, I'll just bleed through it as I talk about 
ask why I picked this particular replay. This particular replay is going to feature myself playing uh, Sniper. And really, we <laughs> we just had a, a really, really, really rough start. We, we were doing really badly, and we were just getting raped. Rape is a very understatement, understatement. like our team's chemistry were bad, we were just not having a good time. So in, in this game, I was trying my best to abuse my creep equilibrium. Uh, I'm the I'm playing sniper in this game at the bot lane. And, uh, let me just pull up the menu here. Yeah, I'm playing the sniper at the bot lane here. And uh, we weren't doing too well, so I needed a lot of farm. I, I needed to farm my, my way back into the game. And generally, that's really hard, especially when your enemy has you know map control. When they're winning a lot, they're downing a lot of your towers. So it's really hard to find a good spot to farm. I'm sure you guys could relate to this: is that you know you, everything seems to be going wrong, but you have nowhere on the map to farm because all your creeps are pushed on their side, or you don't feel safe venturing out. Your jungle's warded, and they come gank you. Like even when you show up with just a little bit, they come to gank you. So like really, what do you do, right? Creep Equilibrium will allow you to do this um, and do this very effectively. If you can find a good patch of creeps just right outside of your tower range and if you have the ability to just keep that creep wave there for like 7 or 8 minutes then you could get a lot of farm and I do mean a lot of farm. And uh, we're, I'm, I'm going to be showing you exactly that in this game as uh, we are nearing that moment in time. There we go. Um, I'm gonna be sitting at. No, I could fast forward it just a little bit, but let's look at the bottom lane just right now. Okay, so um, let's let's look at the time. Right, we're sitting at 14:32, and my creep is at 33. You do math. That's that's a, that's even less than three minutes. That's pretty crappy farming. You see, I'm zero two and one. A team is doing pretty bad too as well. Um, Fortunately, we do have all of our towers up, and we even push two of their towers, so that's not too bad. But really, for the most part, we are very, very down. You see that the enemy team is farming ex way more than we are. But uh, that's not the point. Here, we're going to show you that if you're really, really down, you could use Creep Equilibrium to your advantage. And we're going to just basically watch me uh, not last hitting well, but uh, abusing the fact you just creep equilibrium on this side. And uh, basically, I'm just allowing the creeps to push at this point. And I'm just last hitting as best as I can here. And there's a, luckily a siege unit for me. And uh, that is actually going to help me cre uh, keep the creep equilibrium. And I'm going to be doing something here that not many, not many players will do. And this is a really one good way to keep your creep equilibrium. A lot of times when you see this amount of creeps running at you, I see a lot of players just run straight back to the tower and be like, well, I don't want to take all that damage. I'll run back. But if it, in, in doing that action, if you're running back, this tower is going to just basically, basically mess up your creep equilibrium. The, the tower is going to fire off so many shots at these treants. You're going to A, miss a lot of creep kills, but B, more importantly, you're going to mess up that creep equilibrium. Equilibrium your next wave after this enemy wave dies your next wave is gonna be all the way over here And you're gonna be way way more susceptible to ganks. So What I'm gonna be doing here is actually just gonna tank the wave tank it like a boss Tank it like a man and just start hitting this range tail on down here as my creeps join up Yes, I'm just right outside of tower range here and this look at how safe this position is um, compared to maybe being farming here instead so this is the obvious advantage of creep, keeping your creep equilibrium and really there's only two really solid ganking path um, you know a straight four man gank from here or maybe even a more ambitious gank from the behind the circle around here because but I do have this uh, nice sentry war or observer war being placed by my teammate here